Hey you, let me take a guess. You want to respond to those passive-aggressive people on Discord, 4chan, or Reddit without having to stop playing your game. Do you ever find yourself wanting to grab a new can of soda because your current one is still half full, but it's not cold anymore, or there's too much condensation on the can now? But you can't because if you leave your game for more than 15 seconds, you risk being banned for botting or just f***ing standing there or something like that. How often do you find yourself yearning to stare into the abyss? Questioning existence and hoping the sweet embrace of death has chosen you as its lucky patron today. But your game doesn't have a pause button because it's not 2005 anymore. If you fall under any of these categories, let me introduce you to God's gift to humanity. The poster child of video game activities where, hold on to your vape and your mom's credit card, you don't have to play the game. Of course, I'm talking about none other than the Nightmare Zone. There's something beautifully tragic about a minigame where the main marketing tool is an activity where you don't have to play the game to reap the rewards. But who fucking cares, right? That's the free XP you don't have to work for. So let's get into it. So really quick guys, the Nightmare Zone is definitely one of the two or three most played minigames in old school RuneScape. And note I used played with air quotes here. It's an extreme useful tool for all players both new and experienced almost every guide out there covers three main things the basics maximizing xp and maximizing points to avoid having a 40 minute guide that you have to slog through going over all of this i decided to break this guide up into two different sections one for explaining the basics mechanics inventory at first etc then i'll have three different walkthroughs at the end one for a first timer one for maximizing xp and one for maximizing points so if you're doing nmz for the first time and need to learn the setup equipment inventory all that stuff stay here to get started and get your first 100k points or so if you want max xp or points slither on over to the walkthroughs using the timestamps in the description or just scrolling through the video yourself as you guys know, I don't mind if you watch the whole video, I'd rather you guys just get the information you need and be on your way. And as always, anyone who feels like there's more helpful info or tips I missed, feel free to comment them. I try to pin the most useful comments in each video because I am only interested in helping you guys fully grasp the idea behind the content of my guides. So with that being said, the Nightmare Zone is basically just a combat minigame where you relive your greatest quest hits, fighting a never-ending gauntlet of the quest bosses you've defeated in OSRS. In order to play, you need to have completed at least 5 quests that have bosses in them. Here's a list of all of those potential quests. The ones most people typically complete first are these. Once you have those done, you can start the minigame. The Nightmare Zone is located in a little square arena just outside of Yenil. There's a million ways you can get there, so I'll just list them all on screen, but just note you can only use the grouping teleport option once you have met the requirements to start in MZ. The objective of Nightmare Zone is extremely simple. Survive. Kill as many bosses as you can while staying alive, utilizing whatever consumables, inventory, and equipment you bring along with the power-ups that periodically spawn during the minigame. The boss Bosses you fight and their difficulty are up to you, but you have to choose a minimum of five. More on the choice of bosses in the mechanics section and in the walkthroughs. For this video, I'll be focusing only on hard mode runs for NMZ. The reason why is because for those who don't know, you can do two different types of runs, normal and hard. Typically, at least in my experience, the only time you would ever do a normal mode in NMZ is if you're doing a range training. And even then, I don't even fully recommend training ranged in Nightmare Zone when you have something like the Monkey Madness 2 Caves, Chin Chompas, you know the whole thing. The rewards point XP per hour, everything really is just less efficient. Do hard mode runs. As you kill bosses, you'll get NMZ reward points, which you can spend on a multitude of different items, equipment upgrades, and consumables. We'll get into all of those in the next sections, but yeah, the, the main objective is uh, just a smash. Those are the really easy sections. Now let's get into the more elaborate ones. Your inventory for NMZ is going to pin heavily on three different things. What bosses you're fighting against, your gear setup, and the combat style you're using. And if you're utilizing the consumables brought from the night Nightmare Zone or not. A person going into NMZ for the first time with only 10 or so quests done, just trying it out, will have a vastly different inventory than a 100 plus combat chad with full Darox or Obsidian. Since I will have separate sections of this video for max points and max XP, you can move over to those sections to see those inventories. Right now we're going to focus on a first time NMZ runner and explain what you'll need and why you need it. So assume this is your first run. You have zero reward points, you've never taken a step into this minigame at all. Regardless of what combat style you go in with, you're likely going to die much quicker than most. But that's okay. Remember, we all started this exact same point just looking for an activity where we didn't have to pay attention. All you're really trying to do is just get as many points as possible. To do that, 
that, obviously early on you're going to be relying heavily on your defense and your prayer. Your inventory should include a combat potion or two of whatever style you're using, a special attack weapon like the G Maul Dragon Dagger, anything basically to increase your damage output really, and the rest prayer potions or less optimally, food. Basically the first few runs you're just trying to get as many bosses down as possible and get some points before you'll eventually run out of consumables and die. Just a note, very quickly you should plan to replace this inventory with consumables purchased from NMZ so you can begin doing this AFK. I'm going to explain this further in the max XP and points walkthroughs. Alright, so mechanics of the Nightmare Zone. Let's try to break this down based on the order you're going to deal with them. First things first, NMZ is not free. Every time you play, you have to pay. Specifically, you need to deposit GP into Dominic's coffer. Dominic is the dude who hosts this minigame and charges these prices for the different games you can play. To make it easy for you, this is what you're typically paying, 26,000 GP for a custom hard rumble. We've already talked about why normal rumbles aren't really a good option. Let's briefly discuss why the other options here also aren't that great. Endurance mode is where you fight every boss you've unlocked one-on-one -on -one until you die or you kill them all. While it may seem easier, it's not efficient because most of the bosses have different mechanics, maybe weak to certain abilities, and are really just a hassle to deal with. Think examples of like the witch's experiment from the witch's house quest. That boss has four different forms, you have to kill all of them before you get any points. Huge waste of time. Camille from Desert Treasure freezes you every other fucking second, which is just awesome peak gameplay. Some bosses can poison you, others require certain item switches, I and mean, that's not AFK man, and that's not why you're here, let's be real. Point being, having the ability to choose what bosses you fight and being able to fight them over and over again is much easier to prepare for, which is why we choose hard mode custom rumble here. Okay, so you've deposited your money, you've asked Dominic Onion to take you to a hard mode custom rumble, you have your inventory set up, and you go to drink the potion. You'll be greeted with a UI pop-up that asks you to choose what bosses you want to fight. This is where a lot, and I mean a lot, of people get confused. As we've established, you want to have the easiest bosses that give the most points with no extra mechanics or special items required early on. Rather than that, here's a safe list of bosses you should pick. As a note, the more bosses you pick, the more points you're going to get. There are a lot of nuancy specific rules and equations that go into calculating points from the NMZ bosses, and if you want to learn more about it, there's an absolutely incredible explanation of how the point system works for NMZ from a Reddit user named Dr. Boggs who goes into detail about it and I would highly recommend reading it. I'm going to put that link into the description. But if you just want to check off your list and move on, pick as many of these bosses as you can. Once you've done, you can drink your potion and start the game. You're going to be teleported into the lair where the minigame takes place, and after a small buffer of time to get set up, the bosses will begin to spawn and converge on you. At this point, it's super simple. Just kill as many bosses as you can. While doing this, periodically there will be glowing power-ups that will spawn that you can use to help you. Which ones appear at random and all have different abilities? The yellow power-up is called Power Surge, which rapidly restores your special attack by 20% per game take, making it possible to literally just spam your special attack ability over and over again. This lasts for 45 seconds. The red power up is called recurrent damage and causes you to deal an extra 75% of the damage you deal as a second attack. Meaning if you hit a boss for a 4, recurrent damage will cause a second attack to occur immediately that hits for 3. This extra damage doesn't give you experience but it does help you kill shit faster and get more points. This also lasts for 45 seconds. The purple power up is called zapper and when it's triggered creates a zapping AoE cloud that pulses damage to all nearby bosses every few game ticks. It has a max hit of 8 and just shreds reds through bosses for you, super helpful for getting a lot of points in a short amount of time. Note for this that it can't hit bosses immune to normal damage such as the Dagonoth Mother, Tanglefoot, and Count Trainor. The zapper lasts for one minute. The last power up is the white one, called the Ultimate Force. This one is easy, it just kills every boss that's currently alive. This is a double edged sword because it does not award points when the bosses are killed. This power up is typically used for more experienced strategies and I would not recommend using it for newer players. As a newer player you should activate all these power ups, save the Ultimate Force, or the power surge if you don't have a weapon that you're using for its special attack. Aside from just killing bosses and activating power-ups, there really isn't much to NMZ. If you're trying to mitigate damage, you can utilize the corners of the room to block out tiles where monsters can hit you and make it so only two or so are attacking you at a time. But other than that, all you have to do is just stay alive and uh, just smash, man. It may seem easy and that's because it is. The hard part of NMZ is in the preparation, not the execution. The reward shop for NMZ, the big chest behind Dominic. As you kill bosses and finish your sessions of NMZ, you get rewarded with NMZ points, which you can spend in a few different ways. Let's talk about the NMZ specific consumables you can buy first. 
as that's what most new players will likely want to purchase first with their points. In the reward shop, under the benefits tab, you can find four different types of consumables you can buy. These are only allowed to be used in the Nightmare Zone and heavily affect how you do the NMZ going forward. These consumables are the Super Ranging, Super Magic, Overload, and Absorption Potions. One of these is the key to unlocking the AFK mode of NMZ, more specifically the Absorption Potion. The Super Ranging Potions and Magic Potions are exactly what they sound like, pots that boost your ranging and magic skills, costing 250 NMZ points per dose. The Overload Potion is like a Divine Combat Potion, with a few tweaks. It boosts your attack, strength, defense, ranged, and magic by 5 plus 15% of your current skill level while also doing 50 points of damage to you. This buff lasts for 5 minutes, at which point your skills return to their normal levels and you're gifted back that 50 HP. As a note with this, if you have under 51 HP, you cannot drink this potion because it will obviously kill you. The Absorption Potion gives you a 50 HP shield per dose, and it can be stacked up to 1,000 points of damage. This is the key to AFKing the Nightmare Zone. I'm going to explain this further in the other sections, but for now, I felt it was super important to explain the NMZ consumables because they will become a mainstay in anyone's inventory for this minigame. In fact, as you get points from your first few runs, you should aim to completely replace your prayer potions or food with absorption potions. That's a good breakdown of the consumables you can buy, now let's check out the other rewards. The shop also offers some pretty basic resource rewards such as crafting reagents, runes, runes crafting essence. These aren't really worth the cost unless you have like, I don't know, fucking 10 trillion points lying around for no reason. The highlight of the resources are the herb box and the scroll of redirection. The herb box gives you 10 random grimy herbs a day and is a massive, massive boost for people training herb lore that don't want to keep spending a shitload of GP. You can only buy 15 of these boxes a day and I would say most, if not all experienced players who are making sure they pay attention to their daily activities, buy all 15 as much as possible. For under 10k points, this is a great deal. The scrolls of redirection are used to redirect teleport to house tablets, which are created in your POH using the lectern. This is the only way in the game as far as I know to get these, and having the ability to redirect your house teleport tablets to any of the other available house locations is extremely useful for people who don't have a max portal nexus and still use teleport tablets. I buy these a lot, a lot in the mid game. And for early to mid players, obviously the more teleport app options you have, the better. The last reward option to discuss is the upgrades tab. This tab allows you to spend NMZ points to upgrade or imbue certain pieces of items in the game. It's probably one of, if not the most important and valuable reward you can get in OSRs from a minigame, because a lot of mid to late games require upgrades to reach their best in slot status. Here's a list of those items, and just take a second to note some of the pieces on here and the bonuses. The Slayer Helmet itself is self-explanatory, absolutely required for almost any Slayer task. The Salve Amulet is huge for people who like farming Vorkath for money. The rings on the bottom, basically almost all biz rings in the game. To be able to double the bonuses of these is insane and absolutely mandatory. In order to do that, you need to do NMZ and get these points. This is what a lot of people who do NMZ AFK just for the XP spend their points on, imbuing items as they get them, along with the herb boxes. So really quick note about Runelite plugins, there's a couple that help with this minigame. First one I'd mention is the ultimate NMZ plugin, which is probably the most useful just for the sheer amount of utilities it has. You can set this up to give you notifications when your HP drops above or below a certain amount and when certain power-ups spawn. Super helpful when you're alt-tabbed or AFK, it actually gives you like a little computer notification. I like it a lot. The next is NMZ Optimal Points, which shows the points you get for defeating the bosses that are spawning during your current game. Very useful for first timers who are chasing as many points as possible to build up their overall total. Neither of these are complete game changers, but do provide some really nice quality of life improvements. All right, so we've gone through the basics. Now let's get to our walkthroughs. There's three total walkthroughs here. The first timer, the max XP and the max points. For the first timer, we've covered the inventory. Two to three combat potions, whatever you can bring to increase your attack power or accuracy, a special attack weapon if you have one, and the rest prayer potions or unfortunately food. I'm going to be wearing pretty basic early to mid-level gear here with a full rune setup, dragon scimitar, dragon defender. Oh reliable if you will. We've deposited our money and asked for customizable hard rumble. So we're going to go into the nightmare arena, drink our potion, and set up our bosses. Listen, let's make it easy. Choose any of these bosses. The more you choose, the better. And keep in mind when I say choose these bosses, again, I'm just going through a curated list of the easiest bosses 
that require no extra mechanics to be done. So many people struggle with the boss selection, but really all of these lists you guys see on Reddit, Facebook, MySpace, LinkedIn, wherever the hell you see it, are just what other people think is the easiest boss list. Having one or two different just because you haven't done the quest isn't a deal breaker, trust me. Once you've done that, drink the potion and head on in. Before the game starts, move to the position you want to be in. Early on, since we're using prayer, you can just run right into the middle. But again, if at any point you need to mitigate damage, use the corners of the room to your advantage. Activate Protect from Melee, sip on your combat potion, and get going. From here, just keep killing. Activating power-ups you see from aside from Ultimate Force or Power Surge if you don't have a special attack weapon, and keep your prayer up. You should last until you completely run out of prayer potions and points. Pretty easy, right? Once you die, you'll be teleported out and given your rewards. All right, so Max... XP. This section is all about two things that are different from a beginner standard level walkthrough. What you wear and what consumables you bring. Keep in mind this is not AFK if you're trying to get as much XP truly as possible. Also keep in mind those other guides may say, oh man, check it out, 300k experience per hour. And then they follow it up with, oh, by the way, I'm 99 combat stats, full Derox, Berserker necklace, D-claws, spec weapon, Nothing major, you know, you can do this. Understand if you don't have this gear, you won't hit normal max XP. It's going to be based on what you have. And with that being said, to get max XP, it's absolutely mandatory you use a cute gear setup called Darox. This consists of Darox helmet, chest piece, leg plates, and great axe. These items come from the Barrows minigame bosses. Why is this set required? Well, Darox has this cool ability. When you wear all four pieces, you get a damage modifier buff that increases based on the lower amount of health you have. Basically, the lower your health, the harder you're gonna hit. And I mean, you can hit very, very hard. But why does that matter in an NMZ, you might ask? Well, let's talk about the consumables you could buy from the NMZ shop specifically the absorption potion. So the absorption potion, it's pretty simple, right? It gives you a 50 HP shield every time you take a sip. This can stack up to a thousand damage. One special caveat to the absorption potion is that it doesn't protect you from the damage you cause to yourself. That's where this whole strategy comes into play. You see, there are a few items in old school runescape, specifically the dwarven rock cake and the locator orb. These items hurt you if you eat them or use them. And they also work in the nightmare zone, meaning you can utilize one of these items to get your health down in the nightmare zone while you have an absorption potion active. I think you guys can see where I'm going here. The Darok strategy is honestly one of the most clever uses of game mechanics I've ever seen invented in this game and it goes a little something like this. Your inventory should include the following items. A Dwarven Rock Cake or Locator Orb, a special attack weapon if you want to make use of one for the Power Surge power-ups, and about 5 or 6 Overload Potions, and the rest Absorption Potions. Equipped, you're going to need full Derox along with as much Strength Boosting items as you have. The bosses you're going to want to select are any of these. Keep in mind, from the previous walkthrough I said, again, there might be an exact way to do this, a perfect science with a whole bunch of math involved, but seriously, all I say is just pick as many of these as you want to, and I think all of them are a good choice in my mind. Don't worry about the rest of it. When you enter a game of NMZ with full Darox on, you can sip an overload potion or combat potion. Sip your absorption potions and use the self-damaging items to take your health down all the way to one. This is going to do a few things for you. First, it's going to make it so that the max hit of the bosses is capped out at your current health. If you have 4 HP left, a boss can only hit you for 0 to 4 HP, nothing more. This means that your absorption shield will last a lot longer. Also, since you have such low health, your full Darox set is going to give you near max damage modifier. Fire, meaning you're going to be outputting a metric shit ton of damage at all times. Now you may be thinking, what about my health regenerating? Isn't that going to increase my damage taken and decrease my max hit? Yes, yes it is. I'm proud that you caught that. That's why this isn't completely AFK. The standard strategy is to drink an overload potion, which will deal 50 damage to you temporarily in exchange for the huge combat buff, then self damage all the way down to one HP. Then smash the bosses until the overload potion wears off. Once it does, you'll automatically get 50 HP back, meaning you should be somewhere around 51 to 55 HP. At that point, you would sip a new overload dose, damage yourself to 1 HP again, and then restart that whole process. That's interaction with the game about every 5 minutes or so, along with making sure your absorption stays up. That's how the max XP strategy works. Of course, it's worth mentioning for all of the, you know, sweat lords and people that I know are going to say something, if you wanted to truly max your XP out, you would be prayer flicking piety or another combat prayer, as well as focusing on killing the only the lowest defense bosses, prioritizing using the power surge power up to spam your special attack with your fucking D claws or whatever you've got. I'm 
sure there's a lot more to it. And there's some hero, again, in the comments is going to jump out to the opportunity to point that out, which is fucking awesome. But for the most part, 90% of this is what the Terok strategy is. This is going to get you the most XP. I'm not going to say how much exactly because, again, it depends on a lot of different factors, where you're at in the game, what level you are, what items you have. But this is the most you're going to get. Who knows, man? Maybe I'll put some bogus number in the thumbnail. I don't know. Either way, on to the max points. Once you understand the basics of Nightmare Zone and how to max your XP, getting max points is very easy. The only difference between this and the other strategies are the bosses you choose. I'm not going to dig too deep into it, but basically certain bosses in NMZ give certain amounts of points. This is based on a very, very lengthy equation that includes quest multipliers, penalties, uh, your credit card score, all this shit. I mean, it's, it's literally a science. To make this easy, turn on every boss except for these ones. All these bosses have added mechanics or take forever and waste your time. Note that there will be some bosses that absolutely suck, like the desert treasure bosses, but they are necessary though because that whole quest multiplier thing I was mentioning gives quite a large buff to points when you have them active. Either way, those are the bosses you should avoid and select all the other ones. Now for inventory gear and equipment. It will be just like max XP, save for one exception. Your inventory should include the following items, a dwarven rock cake or locator orb, a special attack weapon if you want to make use of one for the power surge power up, and about five or six overload potions, a pair of ice gloves, and the rest absorption potions. The ice gloves will be for dealing with Farid from Desert Treasure, who will make you unequip your weapon constantly if you aren't wearing ice gloves. Aside from that, equipped you need the full Darox along with as much strength boosting items as you have. When you enter a game of NMZ with full Darox on, you can sip an overload potion or combat potion, sip on your absorption potions, and use the self-damaging items to take your health all the way down to one just like in the max XP method. Then you wipe the floor with the bosses with a few tweaks here. For max points, you're going to want to target the higher point bosses and try to focus them down. Here are the points you can get from each boss in order from highest to lowest. If you see an inadequacy from the Dream Mentor quest, you should absolutely waddle your ass over there as fast as possible. You can also make use of your power-ups here too, utilizing ultimate force to clear the board if there's only shit bosses on the table like Camille from Desert Treasure and is, you know, freezing every other second bullshit. Just like before, you'll keep attacking until your overload potion wears off, resip it to apply it, use your rock cake or locator orb to get back down to 1 HP, then repeat the process, making sure to keep your absorption potion up if you need to. That's how you do max points, man. Again, just like before, I can't tell you the max number of points because it will differ so heavily from person to person based on your gear setup, the bosses that spawn, your power-ups, etc., all that stuff. And there you have it, man, the Nightmare Zone. There's other strategies out there for most AFK, a good mix of points and XP, whatever else, but I feel like this is a strong, strong foundation for somebody who's just trying to learn. People get confused about NMZ because of all the AFK setups, consumables, blah, 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 but really, if you take it all the way back to the beginning, this is all it is. Prepare your inventory, pay some money, select certain bosses, smash those bosses while utilizing the power-ups. It's that easy. If you were successful in completing the Nightmare Zone and starting to grasp these concepts, congratulations and well done. Obviously, it may seem easy, but you still did it and you should be proud of that. Thanks for watching, guys. Have fun and I'll see you on the next one.